Why? Because all those other kingdoms are kingdoms are that are composed and led. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is exciting. I never explained this this way before. Oh, I'm learning something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. Wait. Ooh. That download was powerful. When God said, when Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, he means that all the other kingdoms out besides his are made up and composed of and ran by people in leadership position who are not born again. In other words, they are on their way to hell. And they are, are, are of a carnal mind. The, uh, the other nations that are outside of God's kingdom are of a carnal nature. For us, by us. It's a self, they are self-centered governments and kingdoms. But Jesus said, no, my kingdom is not like that. Notice it doesn't say anywhere in this text that my kingdom is not going to be on earth. The whole reason why God created the earth is so his kingdom would dominate the earth. Be in the earth and on the earth. Let me ask you a question. Are kingdoms on the earth or they are on other planets? Has God's kingdom ever occupied any other planet on earth? As it relates to human beings, no. Human beings live on earth. That's a rule. That's the rule, okay? So when Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, it's just like when he says, set your affections on things above. Not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is here with Christ and God. And I know some of you say, well, that scripture right there just proves you're wrong. No, it doesn't. When, when, in that particular text, when it says on the earth, it means in the context of these nations that are described in Daniel 7 as carnivorous, ferocious, unregenerated, unborn again, on the way to hell beasts, selfish beasts. That's what it means in that text. But Jesus said, let's look at what Jesus said. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 6. Yeah. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. I want to show you what Christ said. Matthew chapter 6, and let's look at verse 10, I believe. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God's full and perfect will for his people has never been done in or on earth. Never. You can't find no time in history. Well, you can find one time and that's right before. Uh, uh, Adam and Eve s sank their teeth into that fruit that they ate in the garden off the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the only time God's will has ever perfectly been done and that wasn't a whole, a real long time. Wow. So, I want to cut this one short here because I have another engagement. But, and I'm going to deal with some more uh you know, opposing views that are constantly brought up, traditionally brought up with this teaching about a kingdom being on earth. Let me tell you something. Do you know that in the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15 and 16, the Bible says there will be a second exodus just like, and it uses Moses, the one that Moses did, as a type of how the second one is going to be. And it's going to happen in the last days. Did you know that? Yeah, just read Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15, 16. And, and tell me that you don't see a second exodus. And you say, well, I don't see the word second. Okay, well, go up to verse 11. Read Isaiah chapter 11, 
verse 11 through 16. Because in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, you see the word second. Because he said, I'm going to bring my hand a second time to recover the remnant of my people, which shall be left, left from Assyria, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and the Isles of the Sea. Yeah. And then he said they're going to have to cross some rivers and walk on dry shy, just like they did when they crossed the Red Sea. Woo! That's deep. You ain't never heard this before. Not only does Isaiah mention it, Ezekiel mentions it. Hosea, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Agai, Malachi. All the prophets talk about this. Moses talks about it in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, Jeremiah 31. Uh, it's so many places in the Bible where this is mentioned. The apostles mentioned this. Jesus mentioned it. John mentioned it. But most Christians don't believe in the kingdom of God. Let me say this in closing. If you don't believe in every phase of God's kingdom as he has revealed it in the Bible it means you are not born again I'm going I'm to prove it to you when Jesus told talk to Nicodemus he told him if you you can't un, the only way that you can't understand the, the revealed phases of God's kingdom is only one reason you that's proof you're not born again the vast majority of Christians are not born again after they after they run into this truth. You can tell. They rebel against it like all hell and the devil. So that's all I'm going to say for right now. Uh, this is going to give you a lot to chew on. This is like a supplement to the series. May God bless you, and I hope that you look at these things. Please come with questions. I know you've been trained not to ask your pastor any question. I'm not your pastor. You're not paying me. I'm not asking you for any money. So ask me questions. I know it's tough. I know you're embarrassed. I know some of you are bashful. But that's a work of the devil. When these things are pertaining to your eternal life, ask questions. Not only ask me, ask your pastor. Okay, I, I yield. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In the matchless, powerful, omnipotent name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's go, y'all. Let me That's what you do. That's what you do. Yeah.
by the computer. I wish I could find my phone. 